Chris Jericho has earned massive respect throughout his career. Through grit, reinvention and pure determination, he fought his way to the top of the business. But not everyone he worked with earned his respect and there are some wrestlers he downright hated. In today's video, we're taking a look at some of the real life feuds that led to real animosity in Jericho's long wrestling career. One of Jericho's earliest feuds came near the start of his career while he was wrestling in Mexico. He found himself clashing with Vampiro, who was already a megastar in EMLL. Jericho accused Vampiro of acting friendly to his face while secretly trying to sabotage his career. While the men never wrestled each other, Jericho just hated being around him. The more time I spent in Mexico, the less I wanted to be around Vamp. Ever since I'd arrived in EMLL, I'd gotten a big push from the company and he didn't like it. The two of us were the main foreign baby faces in the company, but I was no threat to him. His position as the company's biggest star hadn't changed. Even though we were both from Canada and into music, Vamp's actions showed me that he had no interest in being my bud. In response, Vampiro has said that Jericho was insignificant to him back in the early 90s and he barely remembers him. More recently, he's described Jericho as being a poser, especially when it comes to his music career. While Vampiro was one of Mexico's top stars, Jericho's time in WCW brought him into conflict with another major name in Goldberg. Jericho tried to make a name for himself by starting a feud with the big man. He'd already established himself as a great cruiserweight wrestler, but he wanted to get to the next level. Week after week, Jericho called Goldberg out, mocking him and claiming that he was afraid to face him. Goldberg was red hot at the time, and Jericho was an effective heel. It was just so easy to hate him. All he wanted was a quick squash match on pay-per-view, and at least that would elevate him to the mid-card level. The idea was that Goldberg would destroy him in a matter of seconds, and the fans would go home happy after seeing Jericho be destroyed. But Goldberg wasn't having any of it. He said that he didn't want to be involved in a comedy angle and refused to work with Jericho. So despite all of the work that Jericho had put into this, they ended up dropping it entirely. As a young man, Jericho really struggled to get respect in WCW, and there were far more toxic personalities than Goldberg in the locker room at the time. Kevin Nash and Scott Hall had significant power in WCW, and they had a tendency to undermine the younger talent backstage. After all, it was Nash who described the cruiserweights like Jericho as being vanilla midgets. Those guys are very sarcastic and almost kind of bullying in a way. Scott Hall came up to me and told me that nobody was coming to see me. Get in there, do your 5-10 to 10 minutes and get out. No one wants to see you. I remember thinking, wow, what an asshole. Why would you say that? Jericho was close friends with Scott Norton since they'd both worked together in Japan a few years earlier and he couldn't stand to see his buddy being spoken down to. So Norton encouraged Jericho to put Hall in his place. When Scott made another comment, I went up to him and said to never f***ing talk to me like that again, you understand me? I told him that there was no rib or no joke, don't ever f***ing talk to me like that again. He would tell me to calm down and that he was just joking. Jeez, Jericho, can't you take a joke? I looked over at Scott Norton and he was just smiling. That was Scott Hall for you. He was always like that. Which is a shame. He was obviously a great worker and a great performer, but no love lost for him, even until this day. Jericho found that the lack of respect towards him in WCW even extended to the commentary team. Larry Zbysko often pointed out how small Jericho was compared to the bigger stars on the roster like Kevin Nash and Hulk Hogan. 
he later wrote in his autobiography that Zabisco was one of the worst commentators he'd ever encountered. Jericho soon realised that WCW's toxic atmosphere was always going to hold him back, and so in 1999 he signed with the WWF. There was a lot of resentment from Jericho towards Goldberg for the years after they'd worked together. In interviews, Jericho frequently spoke about how Goldberg had held him down in WCW and how he was a bad worker. He basically had nothing good to say about the man and he didn't hold back in giving his opinions about him. So when they ended up in WWE at the same time in 2003, that resentment came to the surface. Jericho got word that Goldberg had been talking about him behind his back, saying that he was too small to be a main eventer, and Goldberg was aware of the smack that Jericho had been talking about him since the last time they met each other. And so, backstage at a Raw taping, Goldberg confronted Jericho and grabbed him by the throat. But Jericho didn't back down. Despite the size difference, Jericho took Goldberg down and got him in a front face lock on the locker room floor. The fight didn't last long as various wrestlers stepped in to break it up. In the end, the two men shook hands and agreed to let it go, but the bad blood between them never fully evaporated. When Jericho first arrived in the WWF, he was booked into a feud with China for the Intercontinental title. It quickly turned into one of the most frustrating experiences of his entire career. Jericho had issues with China's lack of proper training, which made working with her really difficult. She was stiff in the ring, and Jericho hated working with her. Terrible. She was terrible to work with. She wasn't good, but she thought she was. And she was also in a position where she was being pushed really big, so she could beat up guys. She couldn't, and like, I never got that credit. No one ever said I made her look good. It was the other side of the coin. I remember one time she got a little bit of a black eye from me, and you would have thought that I cut her arm off with a chainsaw. I'm like, fuck, I didn't do it on purpose, but what do you expect? It was a tough position for me to be in. It was my first real angle in the WWE, but I did the best that I could. I hope that I proved some things, but there were a lot of issues with working with her. Fast forward to 2002, and Jericho was the undisputed WWF champion. When Jericho won the undisputed championship at Vengeance in 2001, it was a big deal. He beat both The Rock and Steve Austin in the same night, and it was his first ever world title. This should have been the time of his life. He'd reached the top of the World Wrestling Federation, but the feud with Triple H ended up overshadowing his moment because the story was actually about Hunter's personal issues with Stephanie McMahon. In the story, the pair had got divorced. Following the breakup, Stephanie aligned with Jericho in order to get back at Triple H. But not only did Jericho end up as the third wheel in the story, despite being the champion, he was also portrayed as Stephanie's lackey. And just to top it all off, at WrestleMania, Triple H beat Jericho for the championship. It was a miserable first world title reign for Jericho, and it was all thanks to Triple H and Stephanie. Of course, this first experience as a main eventer didn't stop Jericho from becoming a legend in the wrestling business. By the time he joined AEW in 2019, he saw himself as a locker room leader. However, CM Punk would end up disrupting the Harmony backstage after he joined the company in 2021. During a press conference, Punk made some comments about the Elite and Hangman Page, as well as AEW's management, which led to a fight between them backstage. After the incident, the wrestlers involved were suspended indefinitely. Punk already had a reputation for being a troublemaker, and Jericho was seriously pissed off that he'd brought his bad energy into AEW. Never want to shy away from confrontation, Jericho told Punk that he thought he was a cancer to the locker room and a detriment to the company. 
but Punk isn't the only person that Jericho has had a problem with in recent years. His falling out with MVP has been going on for quite some time. It all started when the men had a spat on Twitter, and that escalated when they next came face to face. They both appeared on the Rock and Wrestling Rager at Sea, which was a wrestling themed cruise, and MVP reportedly knocked Jericho out. Two years later, an MVP was visiting some friends from AEW at the same hotel that Jericho was staying at. It was reported that Jericho approached MVP in the lobby in order to discuss their issues, while MVP didn't want to discuss anything and asked Jericho to go outside for round two. That's when Jericho got in the elevator and just as the doors were closing, he told MVP that he didn't fight jobbers. 